Rose is one of the smartest people in the Power Ranger universe. She wasn't sitting up in here trying to work and try to fix the morphing grid to get access to the powers again. Are you kidding me? She had to go back and teach a class in college. That's more important. You stupid bitch. You know, <laughs> sup you guys. ASD classified here. So next year, 2023, Power Rangers will have its 30th anniversary. It is an amazing accomplishment for a TV show to be on the air for 30 freaking years. And next year, the 30th anniversary season will air and it will undoubtedly try to do something special to celebrate the milestone. And I've just been sitting here thinking, Power Rangers has never had a good anniversary season. Ever. To date, Power Rangers has had four anniversary seasons. Wild Force, Operation Overdrive, Mega Force, and Ninja Steel. All have sucked. I pray that the 30th anniversary season will break the curse, but I'm not holding my breath. The Power Rangers are over! Oh, Wild Force. When Wild Force came out, it was largely considered by the fandom to be the worst season of Power Rangers. Now, to be fair, when Wild Force came out, there weren't as many seasons as there are now. Wild Force came out in, what, 2002? There have been many more seasons since and many seasons that have been worse than Wild Force since. But at the time, there weren't as many. So it's pretty easy for Wild Force to be at the bottom of the list when you don't have that many seasons to compare it to. Regardless, back in the day, Wild Force was on a lot of people's worst seasons list. It would go, you know, head to head with Turbo a lot because a lot of people didn't see it for Turbo either. A lot of people also didn't see it for Lightspeed. It was like those three seasons were always duking it out for who's the worst back in the day. But how do I feel about Wild Force? I hate it, of course. Yeah, I've never liked Wild Force. I always saw it as a very childish season. It's very childish in how the dialogue and how the characters interact. It's, it's childish. It's wee little wicked gonna cry, yeah, yeah, yeah. You mommy forgot to dress you? <laughs> mommy. You take credit? <laughs> Don't leave the cave without it. And some people like to act like Wild Force isn't childish because, you know, they killed Cole's parents and the orcs, you know, betrayed Toxica and killed her and stuff. I mean, those are dark things, but those are like two episodes out of 40. Okay, the rest of that show is very kitty. Max! Never give up! And yes, Power Rangers is the kids show, but there is a difference between making a show for seven, eight, nine year olds and making a show for two, three, four year olds. <laughs> when Wild Force came out, I was 12 years old and I remember watching that show and being like, so yeah, I'm finally too old for Power Rangers. Like, I am finally too old for it. My mom was right. You know, my mom was waiting for me to grow out of Power Rangers. She was like, you gonna grow out of it someday. It's taking you a little too long, but you gonna grow out of it someday. And I thought Wild Force was the one. I'm like, my mom finally right. This is too much. It's too dang kitty for me. Aside from it being childish, I really think its biggest flaw is the bad acting. Now, bad acting is no stranger to Power Rangers, but my God, Wild Force. Wild Force takes the freaking cake. The acting is atrocious in this season. Like, <laughs> keep in mind that the story in Wild Force is not really that interesting to me. It's not a bad story, but I'm just not that interested in it and then you compound a storyline that i'm not that interested in with bad acting oh my goodness no. so okay wild force as a whole is not that well liked by the fandom or myself but how do we feel about the special 10th anniversary episode from wild force forever red we freaking love it that's how we feel Forever Red is a blessing, man. It is a beautiful anniversary episode. Oh my goodness. I am so grateful that they gave us that episode. I love it. Love, love, love it. Forever Red, as you all know, is the 10th anniversary special episode of Power Rangers. It's plot involved every Red Ranger at that time, except Rocky, showing up to fight the remnants of the Machine Empire, these evil generals that remained, and they had to destroy them, and they were trying to revive Serpent Terror, and they destroyed Serpent Terror as well. It is a freaking classic. It is an amazing episode. 
Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Even though Wild Force as a whole isn't that great, this anniversary special, it was amazing. So Wild Force did his thing on that at least. Forever Red was such a phenomenon back in the day. Forever Red caused so much discussion in this fandom and in the forums back in the day. No other episode has caused as much discussion as Forever Red did back in the day, baby. Because that, oh my goodness, all the Rangers teaming up like that, all the references it did. And this was after years of them not doing references like that. I mean, the Zordon era pretty much ended within space. We had Lost Galaxy, Lightspeed, Time Force, and a lot of Wild Force of them not not acknowledging anything from the Zordon era and then we get this special episode with all these rangers coming together amazing amazing and i know a lot of people in the fandom really wish that february was a two-parter but honestly i am glad that it's only one part i am while i feel like yeah it would have been better if they fleshed it out a little more gave you know some rangers more scenes and whatnot I also saw some of the deleted scenes from Forever Red, and some of them suck. Like, really suck. <laughs> and that is why I am grateful that it is just a one-part episode, because if they had included some of that stuff, like, if they had Andros bragging that he killed Zordon, if they had that scene in the beginning of the episode where the Wild Force Rangers are talking to two brats in the park, it was awful. That scene... <laughs> encompasses everything that's wrong with Wild Force. And if they would've had that in Forever Red, ugh. Power Rangers don't fight people, so you shouldn't either. They only fight orgs to protect the Earth. So yeah, Wild Force as a whole sucks, but Forever Red is great. Moving on to the next season. Power Rangers forever! Power Rangers forever! Ah uh, yes, Operation Overdrive, the 15th season of Power Rangers. This season is wildly considered to be the worst season of Power Rangers. If you took a poll in the fandom right now asking what is the worst season of Power Rangers, I guarantee you that Operation Overdrive would win. The Rangers were mostly boring and one of them was hella annoying. The villains were mostly boring and one of them was hella annoying. The action scenes went on forever in certain episodes and the slow-mo explosions were so bad and ruined fight scenes. The mentor, Mr. Hartford, was one of the worst mentors of all time, constantly making poor decisions that Spencer had to clean up and routinely showing favoritism to his robot son over the other rangers. Dad, they got Will and Ronnie. And the Sentinel Knight. What are we gonna do? You're going to Egypt. Dad! What? Finding that jewel is our number one priority. Rangers! McIntyre's on need your help! Abort the mission! Hurry! And it certainly doesn't help that at this point in time, many people in the fandom had access to the Super Sentai episodes, and the Japanese counterpart of Overdrive, Bokanja, was way better. <laughs> doesn't help. I will say this though, I am one of those people that does not hate Overdrive as much as a lot of people in the fandom seem to. I actually don't mind Overdrive that much. I'm not going to go so far to say that it's a good season, but it is a season that I feel like the show creators really tried. You know, they failed, they didn't deliver, <laughs> but they tried. Like, it's an honest season that feels like they really tried to make something great here. They just didn't have the budget, they just didn't have the time, whatever the excuse is. But it feels like they genuinely tried to make a good season just for whatever reason that didn't happen and honestly there are worse seasons there are still worse seasons than overdrive in my eyes okay so okay the fandom as a whole though does not see it for overdrive but what about the 15th anniversary special once a ranger part one and two how does the fandom feel about that hmm i feel and correct me if i'm wrong I feel that many in the fandom like this two-parter. Like, I've always seen people give praise to this episode. I have seen people plenty of times say that I hate Overdrive. I hate everything about Overdrive, except Once a Ranger. I've seen that so many times. I hate Overdrive, except Once a Ranger. I, for one, really really hate Once the Ranger. I really hate that two-parter. I hate it for a myriad of reasons. <laughs> okay? I'm not gonna go into all of them, but I will give you a few. The main one is Thrax. I hate Thrax. 
I hate him. I hate everything about him. And I mean, I hate everything about Thrax. I hate his look. He looks awful. Who thought that that costume was a good idea? I hate it. I hate that Thrax is like a grown-up, even though he could only be born during Zeo Turbo in space. That is the only time that he could be born that it makes sense because Rita made it very clear that she never had children before. She didn't even want children when she married Zed, so she could have only had children in Zeo Turbo or in space, okay? And now he's this full-fledged adult who also had a reputation in the universe because Miratrix knew of him, and he also had time to get into a scrap with Sin on the Night and get sealed away and then break out and talk about after all these years I'm free. Uh, like, <laughs> I don't even want to think about it. And the writers were purposefully vague about when he was born and what year he was sealed away and stuff. They were purposefully vague because they knew the shit didn't really make any sense. I don't like it. I don't like it. I don't like his look. I don't like his voice. I don't like his personality. He is an embarrassment to Lord Zed and Rita, and I don't like him. I don't like that the Overdrive Rangers were a bunch of quitters and they quit because their powers were taken away. And they did quit. I don't care what anybody says. They quit. And it seems more out of petty jealousy than anything else because they weren't the Power Rangers anymore and they were replaced by the Retro Rangers. So they just went on their separate way because they're not getting top billing anymore. It is absurd. They are the Power Rangers. They should have stayed there. They should have did whatever they could do to help. I don't care what it is. Sweep the floors. I don't care. They should have been trying to do whatever it could, they could do to help. They should have been trying to figure out a way to get their own powers back. Rose is one of the smartest people in the Power Rangers universe. She wasn't sitting up in here trying to work and try to fix the morphing grid to get access to the powers again. Are you kidding me? She had to go back and teach a class in college. That's more important. You stupid bitch. You know, <laughs> no, man. They, this is their season. This is their season. And they're a bunch of quitters. And then they had to be reminded to not be quitters. No, okay, they're not new rangers. They've been rangers for a long time at this point. Like, no. And then that mess with Bridge even being here, if you've been watching me for a while, you know I hate time travel. I hate time travel, especially in Power Rangers, because it never makes sense, and it certainly doesn't make sense here. Why would you bring Bridge to this? Bridge is from the future. He's from the future. He said it in, the, in this episode. He's from the future. Why would he be here? Why would he be participating in a battle that means nothing to him because the battle has already been resolved in his timeline? Why would he be here? Why would he be here? I just, I don't like once the ranger. But there is a sizable chunk in this fandom that does. You know, maybe the majority of the fandom likes it. So, even if you like the anniversary episode, once the ranger, the season as a whole is not looked on too fondly. All the rangers who came before us are here too. And they entrusted us with their power. Moving on to Megaflop, uh, Megaforce, Megaforce and Super Megaforce, whatever. Okay, the 20th and 21st season of Power Rangers. They are widely considered to be one of the worst seasons in all the Power Rangers. Are you seeing a pattern here? To this day, it boggles my mind how bad Megaforce is. You don't even have to watch season one of Megaforce is literally a waste of your time. If you're gonna watch Megaforce, you're gonna start with Super Megaforce Hill. There is no story. Aliens show up and teenagers get chosen to be Power Rangers and they fight, that's it. There's no other story than that. Most of the Rangers were boring, the villains were boring, and no one remembers them. In season one, the Rangers didn't even know who their main villain was until like episode 17, and then he promptly died. Super Mega Flop gave us horrible tributes to past Ranger seasons. We got a Wild Force tribute where nobody knows the difference between the Animarium and Animaria. We got a weird Jungle Fury tribute where Casey was acting insanely weird and being mysterious for no freaking reason. I couldn't stand Casey in that episode, but then again, I never could stand Casey. But the RPM tribute was absolutely the worst. Oh my God, that was the worst. Oh. Don't be afraid. We're your friends. Come on. It's okay. Come on. Just let me do it. Hey, car, pull over. Super Mega Flop also had this annoying tendency of having the Rangers transform into Sentai-only suits. 
Oh my goodness. So, of course, in Super Mega Force, the Rangers had the power to tap into past Ranger suits and powers, right? You know, they can turn themselves into any Ranger team that they want, right? And then they're turning themselves into teams that were never adapted in the Power Ranger seasons. And that irked me to no end. I know there are some Power Ranger fans that didn't care about that, but I did. Okay, this is a Power Ranger anniversary season to celebrate Power Rangers. Why are they turning into suits that were never adapted in the Power Ranger seasons? Now, I don't really have anything against them turning into those suits if they did it right. If you explain that these are Rangers from another team or something, but they didn't do that. They just turned into them just to do it and just acting like they've always been here. Like, kids whose first season is Super Mega Force will probably think there is a season of these suits but there isn't okay it just it irks me it irks me and it just feels disrespectful to power rangers especially when we never had a team transformation of power rangers lightspeed an actual power ranger team they never did a team transformation into that team but they have die ranger <laughs> okay and they have a bunch of other teams that i don't know the names off the top of my head because it's not power rangers it's <laughs> irksome i also have to mention that Mega Force is a season where they have citizens being like, Power Ranger, what's that? Are you some kind of superhero? You stupid bitch! I will never forget that and I will never forgive it. This is the 20th anniversary season and you have people talking about Power Ranger. I don't know what that is. Are you freaking kidding me? Are you freaking kidding me? You had the little Day of the Dumpster premiere ripoff episode where our soon-to-be Power Rangers are like aliens. <laughs> I can't believe in that. In a post-countdown to destruction world, are you freaking kidding me? Like, it's stuff like that that just pisses me off because this is supposed to be an anniversary season and you can't acknowledge one of the biggest moments in all the Power Rangers, Countdown to Destruction, one of the biggest finales, one of the most celebrated finales. I mean, you had time to try to rip it off in Super Mega Force, but <laughs> oh, acknowledge it, how dare you? My goodness, and Gosei. Nothing about Gosei makes sense. From Zordon placing him on Earth to be the guardian of the planet, when the hell did he do that? You know, from Gosei having all of these freaking powers, how do you have access to all of these Ranger powers? Powers that can access other ranger powers how do you have this where did you get these ranger keys from where did you get any of this from and go say ignoring every other villain that has shown up on the planet until these war star insect aliens showed up why did you ignore everything else go say i don't understand that i only awaken when the planet is under threat like all these other villains weren't a threat some of them actually conquered the planet you're telling me <laughs> None of them were a threat, but these little nobody war star insects are like, you've got to be kidding me. Why didn't Zordon ever call on, you know, Gosei, who he put on this earth to be the guardian of it? Why have you never called on Gosei to help? The many times that Zordon's rangers lost their powers and lost their zords, he never called on Gosei. You've got to be kidding me. you got to be kidding me. And we know Gosei was on earth at the same time as the mighty Morphin rangers because gosei created robo knight and robo knight was still on earth over 900 years ago you see how none of this shit makes sense oh my good god megaforce is an embarrassment of a season it is an embarrassment of an anniversary season especially when its japanese counterpart gokaiju was such a good anniversary season and they did a lot to acknowledge you know the sentai seasons of the past megaforce <laughs> oh no but okay Mega Force and Super Mega Force are crap, but what about their anniversary episode, which was the legendary battle, the finale of Super Mega Force? How was that? Well, most of the fandom and myself think that it's crap. Okay, it's crap. They brought a bunch of old school Power Rangers to come back and they didn't do anything. It's like glorified cameos. They show up for a little bit. They save some citizens and not even in a cool way. Like they didn't blast their way through minions and slice them up. No, they just walked over to them. Hey, you okay? Let me help you up. You know, let me save you from like a falling elevator. That's not... <laughs> That's not action packed. It's boring, okay? It's just they showed up to do that and they had their little helmets kind of appear over their face a little bit, and that's kind of it. It's boring. They just said like generic words to the new Rangers. You know, they all had that Sentai fight footage going on, and that's it. It's very boring. It's very lame. <laughs> and nobody cares for it. No one cares for it. The Power Ranger legacy 
is in good hands. There's nothing you can't do. And finally, Ninja Steel. What do we think of Ninja Steel? Ninja Steel is considered to be one of the worst seasons of Power Rangers. So, in my eyes, it is the worst season of Power Rangers. It is really, really, really bad. It is the only season that I didn't even watch completely. <laughs> I just couldn't do it anymore. There was one day I was sitting watching Ninja Steel and I literally felt like I was dying. Like, I was like, I had to question myself, why am I watching this? Why am I watching this? I'm not enjoying myself. Like, I'm watching it just because, like, I'm a Power Ranger fan. And, I'll, and, you know, I like to watch Power Rangers. But I don't like to watch this season. And I'm trying a little too hard to be a completionist. Because I've seen every episode of Power Rangers until now. I cannot do it. I did not watch every episode of Ninja Steel. And I never will. Because I really, really do not like this season. Ninja Steel shares a similarity with Wild Force in that it's very childish, but it's even more childish than Wild Force. It's very childish. You know, it is made for age zygote. Like, that is how young they were trying to make this show for it. Because it, Ninja Steel talks down to its audience so badly. So badly. And I can barely stomach it. I remember, I think the Super Ninja Steel premiere, they had the Rangers repeat the lines over and over and over again like back to back it was like oh the ninja nexus prism is being corrupted we gotta do something we gotta do something ninja nexus prism being corrupted it's being corrupted we gotta do something i'll just revive the prism and turn it evil she repaired the prism yes and now i'll make my own power stars she's using dark magic to make evil ninja stars back to back okay and they do this because they think kids are stupid right and they're not paying attention and they're gonna forget and i just i can't watch this this is an anniversary season. Why are you making the anniversary season for age cycle for one-year-olds and two-year-olds? It's the 25th anniversary season and you're focusing on babies. Like, not even like seven, eight, nine, babies. It's abhorrent. <laughs> I just, I just don't understand the mindset here. Now, I understand that Power Rangers is a kid's show, but you don't have to treat your audience like they're dumb. I think that's the difference here. You can absolutely make a kid show that challenges kids and makes them think more about things, you know, and maybe introduce them to some concepts and media that they have never seen before. And believe me, that will stick with them forever if you do that kind of stuff, right? Batman the Anime Series is a kid show, you know, and it's renowned to this day, man. Like, come on, Power Rangers... Power Rangers could be that. Power Rangers has the potential to do that kind of stuff. It's just, they never allow themselves to. They always want to, you know, push their stuff on two-year-olds instead of just, like, some older people. Like, I'm not asking you to, like, start stabbing people and be like Michael Myers and stuff, but, like, you could just not be dumb. And Ninja Steel is very, very, very dumb. But yeah, Ninja Steel is a horrible season, barely has any storylines, it is so much filler, okay? They had interesting plots and interesting ideas that they do nothing with. Like, it's just a bad season. But, what about the 25th anniversary episode? Dimensions in Danger, I have to even remember what it was. Dimensions in Danger, what about that? How does the fandom feel about that? Mm -hmm. Honestly... I don't think it's that well received. I could be wrong. Please correct me if I am. But I don't think the Phantom really cares that much for Dimensions in Danger. I'm sure it has its fans. You know, there are Power Rangers fans that like whatever Power Rangers does, no matter what, right? <laughs> but I don't think that is that well received. Me, personally, I think that after Forever Red, Dimensions in Danger is the best anniversary episode. But that's not saying much because the other ones are really bad in my eyes, right? <laughs> you know, other people will say that after Forever Red, Once the Ranger is the best one, right? I disagree, but other people will say that. But yeah, Dimensions in Danger is not that good. It, it, it's not. It has its, you know, it has its good moments, you know, with Tommy coming back. Tommy's my favorite Ranger. And, you know, he kicked a lot of ass in it. You know, he showed up with all of his different powers with the Master Morpher. He called his Falcon Zord. All of that was cool. And it was cool seeing the other Rangers and them actually, like, fighting and stuff. Like, they did more in this than, you know, the Legendary Rangers in Super Mega Force, right? So, there's improvement in Dimensions and Danger. It's just... It still isn't that good, and it has it suffers from a lot of the Ninja Steel writing problems that the rest of that season suffers from. So, ugh. So yeah, whether you like Dimensions in Danger or not, the season as a whole 
still sucks and most of the fandom doesn't like it. So yeah, that is four seasons of disappointment, okay? <laughs> so the 30th season, I really do want it to be good. Like, I really do. Like, I'm not gonna go into the 30th season like thinking that, oh, it's gonna be bad, y'all. I really do want it to be good. It's just that history <laughs> has shown that no anniversary season has been good before. But I like what I'm hearing from it. The rumors, anyway. I don't know what the 30th season is gonna be. But the rumors I've been hearing, you know, that... It's going to be an original team, not based on any Super Sentai. You know, it's going to have less episodes. The team is going to be made of old school rangers and one original ranger who will be the Red Ranger and a woman, maybe. Like, I've heard all the rumors. I've heard that the Mighty Morphin Rangers will return. I've heard the rumors. I don't know what's going to happen, but... I just want it to be good. That's it. I want it to be good. I want it to celebrate 30 years of Power Rangers. That's what I want. And I also heard the rumor that this is it. This 30th season is to close off the show. Like the previous, the continuity, the main Power Ranger continuity that we know. This is the finale of that. And the season after the 30th season, it'll be a new continuity. So this needs to be a good grand series finale. It needs to be good. I hope it will be good. <laughs> Prove me wrong. Break the curse. All right, guys, that's it. Uh, leave me a comment if you want. I don't know. <laughs> Subscribe. Like the video if you liked it. All right, later, guys. Jamatha. Ja